everyone. I'm Deanna Corby with Deanna Corby Dressage. I'm a dressage trainer, instructor, competition judge, and USDF bronze medalist. Thanks so much for joining me today. And if it is your first day here, welcome to my equestrian YouTube channel. Be sure to look just below this video and you'll see the red subscribe button. Go ahead and click that button and you'll be subscribed to see new content every Tuesday and Thursday. I mainly focus on horse training tips, rider position tips, and product reviews. Today I want to talk about the canter and how to sit the canter the best. Um, the canter is a tricky gait for a lot of people because you go much faster than in the walk and the trot and the concussion of the canter feels differently in your body than the walk and the trot do. And uh, a lot of people don't get a whole lot of experience on a horse that knows how to canter in good balance so it can be hard to practice. But what I can tell you, if you feel like you are um, out of control, out of balance, out of uh, alignment with your horse, you feel like you're flopping around, you're not alone. A lot of people feel that way in the canter. Uh, the best thing to do to get better at the canter is, of course, to take lunge lessons on a safe horse with an instructor. When you take lunge lessons, um, you can practice different positions with your uh, body parts, um, different exercises. You can ride without stirrups to test your balance and to develop an independent seat. You can um, uh, just practice holding on to the pommel. When I hold on, when I teach my students to hold on to the pommel, I have them just dig their fingers into the pommel, underneath the pommel, and pull themselves up. Uh, pull, pull your fingers into the saddle. I never let my students push their palms down on the saddle because that can push your butt away from the saddle, which is counterproductive. So dig your fingers under the pommel and pull yourself into the saddle. Uh, so when you're doing that, you want to practice a lot of sitting trot on your uh, safe lesson horse um, because that will set you up for success in the canter. Sitting trot is a really good thing to do to um, practice for your canter. And let me tell you, sitting trot is a lot harder than canter. So if you can do some good sitting trot, uh, then you can, you know, do canter easier. Canter is a lot smoother than sitting trot. Even though you go faster, canter, it just feels a little easier after you've been bouncing around and trying to sit the trot. So another uh, tip that I have in the canter is to try to separate your body parts, upper half and lower half. Your upper half is from your hips to the top of your head, and that half should be one solid, straight, strong, poised piece of your body. From your, your hips to the bottoms of your feet, that's your lower half, and that part should be relaxed and loose and kind of feel like jelly, really and, and truly, and to the point where you feel so relaxed that it, the, the canter feels comfortable. And you're, you should practice all of this doing this on the lunge line. I teach my horses to try and sit very still and very, very relaxed with their bottom half and very tall and strong and straight with their upper half when learning to canter on the lunge line. After you feel like you can be very, very relaxed with your bottom half, then you can really start to learn how to move with the horse uh, in the canter. So the horse ha horse's canter has three different parts, the uphill phase, and that's where you uh, sit very straight and uh, in alignment. Um, and then the middle phase where the horse is on the diagonal pair of legs. And then the downhill phase. When the horse is in the downhill phase, that is when you should try to bring your upper body maybe a little tiny bit back to deal with, uh, so that you don't get pitched forward, to deal with the, the rolling feeling of the canter. So when um, you move on from doing your lunge lessons in the canter and you're cantering on your own, try and think of the uphill phase as when you sit straight and then the downhill phase is when you sit a little bit back. 
I'll put up some videos to demonstrate exactly what I mean. I'll try and put it into uh, slow motion so that you can see in more detail. Now, again, this takes a lot of time, a lot of many years spent on the lunge line, learning from your uh, highly educated trainer and on your safe lesson horse um, to learn how to really sit the canter in balance and stay relaxed. Something else to mention in the canter is that you want your elbows to go a little bit forward at each stride. This will also help you move with the horse. Now, speaking of moving with the horse, something else that I see a lot as a trainer is uh, people pumping in the saddle when they canter. Now, they're not; those people aren't moving with the horse, the ones that are really driving with their seat. They are doing too much. That is not relaxing and moving with the horse. That is driving and pumping in the saddle. And the problem with that is that your horse can uh, begin to ignore your seat and um, sort of tune you out. So you're up there in the saddle working your butt off and then your horse breaks to the trot because um, he is, is uh, not in tune with your seat and you're wasting precious energy doing things that are not important. So I would say as a whole, the best way to learn how to canter, again, is on the lunge line, thinking of your bottom half being completely relaxed and then your upper half being strong and straight. I hope this video helps you guys learn how to canter in more balance. There's a lot that goes into the canter. Transitions are really tough. Teaching your horse to canter in balance so that you can also sit in balance is really tough. Uh, but I think those subjects are videos for a different day. If you like this video, be sure to like it, share it, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. We'll be talking about the canter, the transitions, and how to improve the different types of seats in the canter, and how to teach your horse to canter in balance. We'll be talking about all of that in the future. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!